This is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Well, I'm going to have to make a video again of shaking people up about all the things that are going on today. I'm really concerned about these fear-mongering people who constantly put stuff on the internet about this coronavirus. Now, you're probably just as tired um, as I am about this, hearing about this coronavirus, or you are scared to death and think that the end of the world is here. I have listened to quite a lot of people uh, lately. I want to get the real information. I don't want to listen to this fear mongering and these articles about how many people died and, and all the uh, quarantines they have. And oh my goodness, the latest, you know, now uh, uh, there's uh, coronavirus uh, victims or people in, um, in Italy and, you know, they're afraid, um, you know, I don't know what they're afraid of. And then they're saying, oh, there's, uh, you know, people, cases in California. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really unbelievable, the, the stuff that is out there. And I'm kind of also very tired. I know there's people out there that give you true information. And I have put stuff like that on my Facebook group. Great Deceptions of the End Times. There was a doctor that did some really good research, and gave us very good information, and that's what I want. I want the truth. I don't want somebody fear-mongering because they are telling us things that really they don't have no idea what's going on. Obviously, behind this... Um, coronavirus. There's a lot more things going on than what we know. And the reason why I think there's more going on is because our government is not coming out and telling us the truth. We're hearing it from sources out there. We're hearing it maybe from uh, public news, uh, TV, newspaper, we're hearing it, of course, on the internet from all kinds of different sources. And, but the government is not stepping out either that, or I haven't seen the government's response to this crisis. I have not heard um, Trump's response to this crisis, if there even is a crisis, okay? If there even is a crisis. It should be up to our president or our governor to stand up there and say, this is what's going on and give us the information. But they are not doing it. Why are they not doing it? Hmm, that is exactly the question. I have um, looked at a video by a guy and I look at his videos once in a while. And the guy's called The Last American Vagabond. And I don't watch him um, a lot. I usually read their, his headlines. He is, his videos are just way too long. And then I cannot listen. His last video was like two hours, I believe. I mean, I get his three hours, three and a half hours. You know, and he talked about the coronavirus. He talked about other things, uh, but I don't have time. I mean, he started talking about this coronavirus at 50 minutes into his video, and then he just kept talking and talking and talking and talking about this coronavirus. And for me, that's just way too long. But he's he's got good information, okay? He's got information that maybe we need. But again, not one source is is really um, good enough. You have to look at various sources, various sources, okay? Um, and compare them 
And even then, it is extremely hard to understand what's going on. I have one uh, person that I listen to, and I actually put um, his video, one of his videos on uh, my Facebook group as well, but he's in German. So you, if you, you know, understand German, you can, uh, it's, what's his name? Mr. Mr. Black Chain or something like that. Um, I don't remember his name. I think something with blockchain. Um, so he has some really, let's say humorous, very humorous um, videos. And he's trying to hide things and, you know, kind of dance around it. And you can really not tell very well what he is really trying to tell you. But it's interesting to listen to these different sources because they tell you uh, uh, more information and instead of getting this headline, panic headline, okay? Oh my goodness, we're going to die tomorrow kind of headline. Well, anyways, the pieces that I have kind of brought together, they're just telling me that there is something deeper going on than just an epidemic. Uh, many sources say that this is a created virus or let's say a virus that has been tampered with because there are different strands of this coronavirus and we are really having these corona, uh, corona, coronaviruses here in the States. But supposedly they're not as um, dangerous as this strand that um, they found there in uh, Luhan or Wuhan or wherever it was, China. Why did they find it there? Because there's a lab. There's a biological lab where they create these kinds of things or tamper with these kinds of things. They're telling us, oh, you know, they came from bats or animals or all that stuff. That is all a bunch of lies, okay? They know that... For some reason, um, maybe either purposely or accidentally, which I cannot imagine accidentally that it happened accidentally, somehow this virus got out and all they did is maybe use the population there to test how people are going to react. Okay, so this is, is really what happened. Now, but again, we really don't know because nobody tells us what's really going on. The Chinese government is not telling us, okay? Our government is not telling us. Nobody in this whole wide world, any government is telling us really what's going on. No, they're allowing this misinformation to continue. And that's why I think it is purposely purposely done that way, okay? Purposely, they're allowing this misinformation. They are testing how people react. Um, maybe they can use it against us in a sense because they're saying, oh, look at, look at all this misinformation and this false information on the internet. We're going to have to crack down. Uh, we're going to have to censor this. I think a better way is for everybody to be more critical about these things that are coming out from the internet. You know, it's kind of obvious to see which of these articles are nothing but hoaxes uh, or, you know, fake news or fear mongering. Really, that's what it is. It's fear porn. Okay, that's what we're calling it today. It's fear porn. Uh, we're putting out this fear porn and nobody wants to hear the truth. Oh, no, no, no. People are just, uh, uh, um, you know, running after sensationalism. Maybe that's what it is. People are running after sensationalism. They like to be hyped, hyped up. They love um, to be excited. You know, oh, my goodness, we're going to die. Uh, I think they like that. However, there's also people that are very sensitive and 
um, you know, are being pulled along and actually, you know, maybe, tr I mean, like maybe, uh, um, you know, ang are getting anxiety attacks over that. And that's why I'm really making this video so people are more careful, more careful in checking out these informations. Okay, check out the informations. We are living in a very dangerous time, very dangerous time. We get bombarded with all of uh, with all kinds of false information, false news. Okay, uh, uh, fear mongering, uh, especially right now. And I know uh, that that I'm also doing this end time stuff. I'm not trying to hype anybody up. I'm not trying to really scare anybody. What I'm trying to um, get people to understand is that Jesus is coming soon. We are seeing the signs and that we are living in really the last days. My last video, of course, I used that word near, that the Armageddon is near and somebody actually two people even said oh what is near well figure out 2,000 years compared to 2,000 years what is near okay what is near this time is up okay this time is up our the time for human beings or oh, humankind is up we have 6,000 years. Now, whether that's symbolic or real, 6,000 years of human history. If you're looking at the Bible, okay, and you, you look at human history from the Bible, that would be 6,000 years. That goes along with the six days of creation, okay? There is a comparison there. And if you don't want to understand it, um. I can't help you, but there is a comparison there that one day with God, and that's in Peter, uh, first or second Peter. Um, let's see. Uh, one day with God is like a thousand years. I'm going to put that in. So see, you can do that always. Uh, you can do that in, um, and it's not coming day. Like a thousand years. Okay, here we go. Second Peter 3 8. Second Peter 3 8. One day with God is like a thousand years. And this is about the end times. Okay. This is about the end times. If you start reading prior to 3 8. You know that uh, Peter is talking about the end times. I can put that in. Okay, what did I say? Three. Okay. It says, Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as a reminder to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. Wow, wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through our apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. <coughs> Sorry. They will say, where is the, uh, this coming? He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters, also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed by the same word the present heaven and earth are preserved for fire being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly 
But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but every everyone to come to repentance. See, this whole thing about the thousand years is like one day to God is embedded in this end times uh, preaching of Peter. Okay? So, and most people don't, don't even, you know, bring that up when it comes to end times. But Peter brings it up. And he is saying that one day with God is like a thousand years. So now we're coming up to 6,000 years human history. 6,000 years. Okay? That means time is up, people. Time is up, no matter what your way, the way, which way you want to look. And he is also saying at the end there's going to be scoffers. They're saying, oh, hey, nothing has happened so far. Why do you think um, Jesus' return is near? Okay? That's scoffing. It's a scoffer when you do not know what the Bible says. The Bible says we are coming to the end. And so we need to wake up. And the things that are happening today are end times signs. End time signs because our politicians, and it's not even our politicians. It is who is behind the scenes um, controlling humankind. Now, who is behind the scenes controlling humankind and deceiving them? Because that is what's going on today with this coronavirus and many more things. Many more things. We have people that are so, how would you call it? Um, conceited. Conceited. It's conceited. There's many people that are conceited and they're saying, Oh, God is not going to judge us. Oh, God is not coming. Jesus is not returning. Oh, no, God is going to protect us. We have so many people out there that are scoffers. They scoff God, uh, God and they don't want to see what the Bible is saying. And so now we are living in the end times. And, and end times mean, what does that mean? When I say Jesus is near, well, it can, can happen within the next five years, people. I'm not even sure if we have five years. And people are still thinking they need to wait for the... Uh, yeah, people are still waiting for this tribulation to happen. Unbelievable. People are so confused. This is not just the regular people out there that are being confused and deceived by our government. No, these are people that are saying that we are Christians. Actual people that say they are Christians and they read the Bible. Okay? They read the Bible, they say. And they don't understand that there is no such thing as the end times seven year tribulation. People, Jesus is returning. And after that, the wrath of God. That means the rapture is going to happen. And if you're not in the rapture, forget it. You're going through the wrath of God and you're not part of the bride. That means you can only be in this world as another human being. Okay? Because once the, the rapture happens and the wrath starts, that's when the day of the Lord starts. That's when the day of the Lord starts. And the day of the Lord is 1,000 years. Okay? This is this thing about this 6,000 years of human history coming to an end. And the day of the Lord or the Sabbath day starting. See, people don't understand these things. But then, oh, if somebody tells them the truth, they cannot even hear it. 
And that's why we have this whole confusion. Because Satan knows he has confused and deceived humankind uh, unbelievably. We're not even the Christians anymore. Or the so-called Christians know the truth. See, this is what Satan did with Eve in uh, the garden. He gave Eve just a teeny little, actually, he didn't even give her a lie. He tested her. He seemed to have already known that she um, went away from what God told them. God told them, if you eat from the fruit, you will die. Okay, that's what God told them. And Satan tested them. Why? Because he already knew. He knew that Adam and Eve already believed that touching it also would be um, to death. But it wasn't. They added that. Now, I wonder how they came up with that lie. That was a lie. Because God only told them, hey, you eat from it, you die. Well, so Satan could test them and say, oh yeah, they're already deceived. So hey, I'm going gonna, I'm to give them some more lies here. Oh no, that's not true. God didn't tell you that. When you touch it, that you're going to die. Oh no, you're going to be like God. Do you see? This is how Satan works. He gives you a little lie or he tests you. Oh, have you been, um, you know, straying from the word of God just a little teeny bit? Well, I'll give you more, he says. That's what Satan does. You start believing one little lie and Satan is going to feed you more and more and more. And that is where we are today, people. That's where we are today. People are deceived. They have believed lies. All unbelievers have believed lies. They all are children of Satan. And they have been deceived from the beginning. So how in the world do they know what's right and wrong? They don't. They think, oh, my opinion counts. Oh, what I believe counts. How many times do I see that? Oh, people just flocking to what do you believe? What is your opinion? You know what? Nobody, very seldom do I see a person, when I ask a question, like for instance on Facebook, I ask a question, very few people give me answers from the Bible. Okay? Okay. Well, the thing should be, hey, this is what scripture says, right? No, this is what my opinion is. And how do I know what, why my belief or my opinion is correct? Because I hear it from somebody else and I don't check it and I don't test it. Okay. The Bible tells us that we are supposed to test everything, everything. Matter of fact, I think it's even in Philippians where Paul uh, praise the Philippians for testing everything, okay? You can look that up. I'm sure you can find it, um, you know, if you put it in your computer. But I believe it's in Philippians where Paul really um, um, uh, praised the Philippians for checking out everything and not just taking it. We shouldn't be taking anything from anybody, Okay? not even from me. You need to check everything with scripture. That means you read scripture. You block everything else out, what you ever heard about that scripture, and you read scripture. And you ask the Holy Spirit to show you the truth. Okay? To show you the truth. Now, when it says here, above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. That is what it says. Don't, don't hem haw around. Well, what are the last days? We're in the last days, period. We're in the last days, okay? So scoffers will come 
and they will follow their own evil desires. You will have a lot of preachers out there, huge mega church preachers that follow their own evil desires. Lots of them. They will say, where is his coming? He promised. Oh, he ain't going to come. Oh, no, we're going to have a, a seven-year tribulation first before he comes. You know, and then there's others that say, oh, no, he's going to come before that seven-year tribulation. Well, we've got those kinds of people as well. Because there are actually people that say, oh, no, all people have to go through tribulation. Yeah, all people have to go through tribulation. People, make no mistake, all saints go through tribulation. We are not the only generation. Um, there have been many generations since Jesus died. They all went through tribulation. Please look at historically what the saints went through. Okay? We are not the only ones. Don't be so haughty. And think you're the only generation that has to go through tribulation. Don't be so haughty. You are haughty because America has been doing well. Because Americans have had a good time and have not been officially persecuted or put to death. But yet our faith has been attacked constantly for the past hundred years and probably even even further back our faith has been attacked i would think since the counter reformation that means since the reformation okay our faith has been attacked by the counter reformation and since the reformation okay our faith our reformed faith uh, which didn't even all the way go back to the scripture. Most of what um, uh, the reformers changed was very, very limited. Okay, it was very limited. Very soon, the Counter-Reformation to stop the whole effort. And today, what we're seeing is um, even the reformed people, the Protestants, even Shalga, going back again to the old pagan ways which were presented by the Roman Catholic Church. So, no, we have been deceived. All of us, we all have been deceived for a long, long time. And we um, need to change that. Why? Because we're coming to the end. And we have to um, look at the Bible and read what's going on. Because Jesus is coming soon. No tribulation, seven, seven year or three and a half year tribulation. No. Okay? He will come like a thief in the night. And you will not expect him. And if you are not ready, if you don't have the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people say, oh yeah, I have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Do you really, do you really follow Jesus? Okay? Yes, I can say I have the Holy Spirit. Everybody can say that. Oh, yeah, I have the Holy Spirit. But are you really following Jesus? And if you really, really following Jesus, you have to read what the Bible says. You can't just run after somebody else. You have to go what the Bible says. You know, and make no mistake, the Holy Spirit is, is, is big enough to be your only teacher. He's the, you know what? He doesn't need somebody else to tell you what kind of interpretation you're supposed to be applying. Read it yourself, for yourself. And if you don't understand it, then wait for the Holy Spirit. Then just admit, okay, I don't understand it, okay? And wait for the Holy Spirit. I just think most people, they just went ahead and they are really so conceited to believe that they know the truth. But in reality, what they believe does not make sense. It Even when you apply analytical thinking or logical thinking, it does not even make sense. 
But see, that's not the only thing that we are deceived about. We are deceived about so many other things, like this coronavirus, like our political system. We're coming up on this um, election year. Well, we are in the election year, right? We're coming up to this election. And really, I should be doing maybe a separate even message about this election today. People are very deceived, very deceived. Anybody who believes that we are living in a democracy is deceived. We are not living in a democracy. We have world rulers behind the scene that you do not know who it is. You don't know. We are hearing about shadow government and um, you know, deep state. Oh, we don't have to worry about that because you know what? Oh, Trump drained the swamp. So why would we worry about the deep state and the shadow government? Oh, Trump is not part of the shadow government or the deep state. Ha, huh. conveniently they put Trump in there. So we are ignorantly continuing um, our ways. No, you need to understand that every political ruler or every political person in this country, in the United States, matter of fact, probably in the whole wide world, okay, is was put in place by a deep state or shadow government. In other words, a power, a, a, a ruling power behind our governments. There is a ruling power behind our governments, okay? It's called the New World Order. And that New World Order is behind it. And you know what? We don't even know who it is. You know that? You don't even know who it is. Because you believe lies. You believe lies. You believe, oh my goodness, Trump is the one. Trump is the one, you know, or uh, people believe, oh, you know what, whoever it is, Bernie is the one. Um, no, people, whether you are Democrat or Republican, they're both the same party and they work, well, they're different parties, but they work for the same people behind the scene, okay? They work for the same people behind the scene. And we are so deceived. We are so tremendously deceived. And you know what? Again, we're coming up to this election year. And people are already going nuts. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Trump is going to be the one that should be it. Or the Democrats. Oh, Bernie should be the one. Or whoever should be the one. Our presidents, all of them, and we still have presidents, you know, even today alive. The Bush, the Clintons, Carter is still alive. Um, who else is still alive? I think that's it. And then, um, of course, Obama. And now we have Trump. Now, Trump acted like he doesn't belong to the, the rest of the, the group. But the rest of the group, oh, they were together. Oh, yeah, they were buddy, buddy friends. Oh, Trump, we don't want to have anything to do with Trump. That is all a lie. That's all a lie because, you know, once Trump is out of office, he's going to be in the same kind of buddy-buddy uh, group again with the rest of them. Why? Because they are all puppets of the deep state or the shadow government. You know, since Trump was in office, we don't hear this word as much anymore, like deep state or shadow government. Why not? Because they fooled you. Because they fooled you to believe that, oh, yeah, Trump took care, took care of it. Oh, sure, there is no shadow government. Just the Democrats. Oh, they're the, they're, they're the shadow. Well, who's, who's the shadow government if it has to do with the Democrats? You think a shadow government who rules everything is not going to be in control of the Republicans? People are so dumb. If there's a shadow government or a deep state, that deep state or that shadow government has to have enough power to control everything. Or else, why would I have a deep, shade, deep, uh, deep state or shadow government? Ah, people are deceived. Okay? People are deceived.
and the shadow government, the deep state, the new world order, they're the ones who are pulling all the strings, including this thing with the coronavirus. Who knows what they're trying to do with it? I don't know. Is it maybe secret warfare that we're not supposed to be nobody? Like, for instance, we knew about the Cold War, right? But the Cold War not, was not like an obvious warfare, but it was in the shadows, right? We didn't know. Well, is this coronavirus, you know, maybe a military weapon that kind of got out of hand? Hmm, have you ever thought about that one? Anyways, I want you to be aware of things, research things, Stop believing everything. Stop believing everything, okay? Don't allow our government to fool you. Don't allow our religious leaders to fool you. Investigate, investigate, investigate again and investigate, okay? This is very important. Again, you don't have to take my word for it. I want you to... Look look at these alternative things, but be aware of what's being told. I'm coming to an end. Wake up and let the Holy Spirit guide you always.